Greetings, I am your host, Glenn Alex, and you are watching The Glenn Alex Show, live on the Bold Brave TV network. Each episode of The Glenn Alex Show focuses on a different aspect of health because I believe in total health and the whole person. And I am on a mission to help as many people as I can be joyful, connected, confident, and complete the life experience we call wealth, W-E-L-L-T-H, which is health plus other riches. And today's episode is on something that will make us all wealthier and a safer place for everyone. Please help me welcome my guest, Christine Scott, to The Glen Alex Show. We are going to talk about conflict resolution. Hi, Christine. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for your patience with my technological issue today. <laughs> no worries. Technology is a big deal these days. So will you take a minute and, and please introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so I have been working with young people who lived on the streets for many, many years. And I started out as somebody who's very afraid of conflict. It, it really freaked me out. <laughs> I didn't know how to handle it. And um, fortunately, they became some of my greatest teachers. And what I learned from them, whose lives were like constantly imperiled, right, um, helped me become better at my own reaction to conflict and also better at solving conflict itself. Okay, excellent. So that's, that's what brought you to conflict resolution. What actually are you doing mm -hmm. with it these days? Um, now I train teams and I consult with organizations around how to mitigate conflict influence within their team, especially as it relates to customer service, because let's face it, everybody's on edge these days, and it, it takes a little extra skill to help, um, help ourselves calm down and help others calm down. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question. Why do we need conflict resolution? Ah, oh, that's great. Well, <laughs> as you know, Glenn, you, you talk a lot about our boundaries and becoming the better, the better person that's inside of us and that we're all capable of. We can't do that unless we can handle it when things get a little tense, a little rough, a little raw. Because when things get a little raw with another human, that's when our most vulnerable and honest selves come up. And that's a great opportunity to build trust. It's a great opportunity to find out where our boundaries are and connect authentically. If we can't handle conflict because it's scary and we don't like it, we will never advance in relationships to that deeper, more connected level. Okay. Wow, that's a pretty deep answer. <laughs> I was expecting something more simple, like we just need to stop fighting. <laughs> That would be nice too. <laughs> well, so what is the, the, for you, what is the basis of conflict? What, what is the root cause of it? Mm. Well, we all have these messages that are running around in our heads that we're not good enough or we didn't do it right or if only we were more like this or like that. And when somebody says something to us, that underlines one of those messages we already have, one of those doubts, insecurities, unhealed wounds, that creates conflict. Right? Now you have just become the personification of the thing that I am inwardly worried about, like the thing that I've been pretending doesn't exist and isn't a problem. All of a sudden it is. Wait a and minute. You might not have like wanted me to go there. <laughs> Wait a minute. But are it you, are are you saying that you don't make me feel bad, that you just reflect what I'm already thinking about myself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that, that is total opposite of how people perceive things in this world. We blame other people for our own stuff. Yes. Yes, we do. And that gives them power over us. Once we say, oh, you're, you are the center of everything that's wrong with my experience right now, we give them a lot of power. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. So is that what the reactivity is? The reactivity that um, underlies conflict 
is is more about you you mirroring what I already believe about myself. Yes. Instead of you actually definitely. harming me. Yep. And and I also warn people that if they have a lack of resources, like we all know when we're hungry or tired, we're more likely to be reactive. So there's both the you know the sociological and physiological stuff, and and just taking care of your body, right? All of all of these things allow you to not let those messages or those doubts run the show. Okay, okay. So if I'm in a conflict, I'm rested, I'm nourished, and I'm still reactive. What do you mm-hmm. say to that person, or or say to me? I'm sorry, what would I say to you as the person who's feeling that conflict? Yes, who's being reactive, even though I'm, I'm rested and I'm nourished, so those issues don't come into play. Mm-hmm. So I, I would, um, when that happens to me, I always encourage that person. So what, what do you need right now? Just that simple question. What do you need right now? That's great that your body's taken care of. What, what else is going on? And, and typically, well, I need you to stop doing this and stop doing that. Like, oh, okay. All right, well, I'm going to just give you a pause and make sure you get what you need from you because clearly I'm not the right person to help you right now. And once you do that, once you take yourself out of this dynamic about, oh, it's me versus them, and, and people have nothing to latch on to them. They can't blame you for their bad condition. Okay. So is that the first step of de-escalation or is, is there more to it? Well, there's, there's more to it. The, the first step is really de-escalating yourself. Um, what's going on with your body? Do you feel your fight, flight, freeze coming up? And if you feel that coming up, you, you, there's some things that you can do to kind of override that nervous system response. So, you know, we have this thing called the sympathetic nervous system, which is also called fight, flight, freeze response. When it takes over, we have a really hard time having perspective, learning new information, listening or processing. Um, everything just looks like it's out to get us. So when that happens, we're ruthless for about 20 minutes. I remind folks, okay, this is your opportunity. Before you have that full response, just lean in, listen to your body, and give it a different message. And that different message is, I'm, I got this, I, I'm safe, and I'm in charge of the situation. And we can do that by breathing. We can do that by um, a neurovascular hold, which is simply putting your hands on the front and the back of your head at the same time. Uh, 20 seconds of gentle pressure, um, especially with those deep breaths, will help your body reset and realize that it's safe right now. The other thing that you can do as you navigate the situation in front of you is you can respond to that situation on your own terms. Just because somebody's making a demand on you at this moment doesn't mean you have to react to that demand. You can simply say, wow, that is a great question. I'm going to get back to you in five minutes. Or, wow, you deserve my undivided attention. I don't have it right now. How does this afternoon look? And once you do things like that, that set the terms of your engagement in the situation, your body just says, oh, situation handled, right? And, and that, that sympathetic nervous system will, will not take over. So, okay. And you can also take five steps back, take, take five minutes away, like whatever it is for you to know, I choose to engage with this other on my terms because the – biggest thing that makes our sympathetic nervous system activated is the sense that I'm cornered and I don't have a choice in the matter. Right. Okay. So, so what you're talking about is basically being self-aware, having the level, having the level of um, self-awareness. So um, you can see your options and make appropriate choices. Yes. And if you don't feel like your brain is working well, because we all know that happens when we get flustered and overwhelmed. Just say, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that right now. Can I circle back? Okay. Okay. Well, those, those, um, the tips you just gave, they sound simple enough. And that's something you can do 
in the moment that doesn't require a lot of energy or effort. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you been um, teaching conflict resolution? Uh, about 20 years. About 20 years. Okay. And is there um, one technique that tends to work the best for most people in most cases, or does it vary? Well, so we talked about that first step of de-escalating yourself, right? Letting yourself not go into that sympathetic nervous system. Um, the next thing is like being very aware of this other person. And when you do that, you have to have like two things happening at the same time. You have to have very clear boundaries around who am I? What's my role in the situation? What do I intend to do here? And then you also be, have to be able to be very compassionate and not blame, shame, or, or direct hostility at this other person. Um, when you think about the last time you had to do something you really didn't want to do, like address a bad habit or, or make amends with somebody, you wouldn't have done that if you didn't have both support and boundaries, right? Okay. You have to have both of those things together. And so when I'm addressing somebody who's having a bad behavior, how, how I think about it is like, I'm going to love up this person, even though I really hate what they're doing right now, right? Like I'm going to have very firm boundaries around their actions, but believe the absolute best about them. Because once we assign, oh, that they're like this because they intend to mess my day up, then I'm no longer seeing that person. I'm only seeing my projection of how they're out to get me, right? And I'm not going to help them. They're, they're, they're going to feel that hostility, that aggression, that judgment in my voice, and they're going to just dish it right back at me. So a really good conflict resolutionary is somebody who gets like, there's a great human underneath all of this anguish, all of this really obnoxious behavior. Um, okay. A couple of days ago, I was actually at a polling place watching voters who were really upset about having to use a drop box instead of being able to hand in their, their ballots or vote in person. And, and I just watched them walk into this polling place with really big, angry energy, but there was no one to push back at it. They all just said, yeah, you can hand your ballot to me. I'm, I'm going to put it in the box right there. Is that okay, or do you want to put it in the box? And just like remind people, this is this is your duress. This is your situation. It's right. not mine to take it away from you, right? It's just mine to say, I'm here. This is my role. I can hand it over to that box, or not. It's totally up to you. And okay. they were so well, let me, let me ask you a question. Let, let me ask you a question. Um, if um, clear boundaries and compassion are required in de-escalation. De how do you teach people to be compassionate? Because in today's world, it's all about what I get, when I get it, how much of it I get, how long I get to keep it. And if mm -hmm. someone has any slight threat to that, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to go off. <laughs> you are exactly right about that, Glenn. And the beauty about conflict intervention is you don't have to be compassionate very long. You can give somebody your undivided attention for 25, 45 seconds, okay. and it shifts something in them. They start to relax. They start to lean in. They start to realize, not only am I being a jerk, but I'm being a jerk in a very safe space with somebody who has the capacity to know I'm better than this. And I don't know if anybody's ever done that for you, but it's a real gift when somebody just says, Hey, what's going on? Seems like you're having a rough time. Is there anything I can do? Yes. And you're just like, you melt. You're just like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Somebody cares. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't take, you don't have to be Mother Teresa. You just, you just have to lean in, give them a little bit of your undivided attention in a, okay. in a way that's solid and sincere. And let's face it, we all have people that we can't be sincere and authentic with. That's okay. Those are not the folks you want to lean into. I, I, I encourage people, like, take a list of all of the things that get under your skin and then start with the easy ones. 
You know, don't don't start with the the relative you have the biggest fights with first. Right, <laughs> like, right. Save that one for the end of the list. <laughs> Okay, and that's probably a good strategy with the holidays coming up and spending more time around people. Yes, yeah. for sure. Okay, so how do you see um, uh, the pandemic contributing to yeah. um, conflict, interpersonal conflict, world conflict? Yeah, unfortunately, as we've seen with um, data about addiction and alcohol use, and as we've seen with mental health access and the demand for mental health access actually exceeding the capacity for the system to provide it, um, people are hurting right now. The pandemic has just really taken the rug out from under everybody's coping skills. And it's changed how we socialize with each other. It's changed how, how we imagine our lives as connected to others. All of that isolation, all of that time in lockdown. And what that means is that we're coming out bristly and rude <laughs> and having all of these unmet needs for connection that we're not doing a great job of leaning in and rebuilding. Right. And so I really encourage people just like see that as a symptom that we're all up against, especially, you know, I'm working with a lot of folks in customer service, you know, at, at restaurants and doctor's offices and, um, tourist destinations and hotels, and I'm just saying, okay, people have paid for this fantasy experience because they want to be seen, cherished, and valued. And they forget that you went through the same pandemic that they did, and that you probably don't have any more resources than they do. Right. So it's your job to just give it your best until you can't. And to go home and in your off time, spend a lot of time rebuilding your reserves and, and I give people some ideas around what, what that looks like. Okay. Okay. That sounds fair enough. Now we've talked about um, interpersonal conflict. So allow me to shift it just a little bit to world conflict. If on an mm. individual level, I'm reacting to something you say that is a trigger of what I'm already thinking about myself and I lack self-awareness, what is the root cause of conflict between countries or cultures? Wow. I know, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just do what well, you can you know, it's my fault. I went deep to the first question and now this yeah. is my reward. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, when I when you type conflict into the search engine, that's what comes up. Honestly, it is world conflict, and um, there's there's a turf war that's been brewing in humans around tribalism and identity for as long as we could give ourselves names. And you know, I would like to believe that we're getting bigger and better than that. And the fact that people are all gathered to talk about, you know, the global climate right now um, suggests that we are. Um, when you look at how many countries uh, participated with the World Health Organization during the height of the pandemic, suggests that we are, that we're starting to finally get the message that our capacity to be kind and respectful to people on the other side of some type of international boundary actually helps us too, right? It, we're getting there. I, I wish I wish we were there. We're, we're not clearly. Okay. Yeah. You know, I really wish we were closer myself. I have a question from a viewer who is um, unable to uh, come on live. So uh, I'm going to ask you her question and it is, uh, what's the best way to deal with a person who refuses to accept errors of their ways, but always criticizes everything you do? Right. The, my first advice is only engage with them if you can be curious. Mm -hmm. And by curious, I mean, being open to learn whatever it is that's motivating this person's behavior. Because basically we're just behavioral anthropologists, right? We're just people who are leaning in going, huh, 
huh, I noticed that when I'm with Cindy, she talks to me differently than when I see Cindy with her other friends. Hmm. And I wonder why that is, right? Like what we would normally do is go, wow, Cindy's really disrespectful and she's really always con- you know, criticizing me and blah, 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 blah. But, but instead of just like, okay, throw away our definition of assigning intention. No, oh, Cindy doesn't respect me, blah, 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 blah. It must be because I dated her brother, right? Like, no, get rid of all of that stuff. And just say, hey, Cindy, what I noticed the last time we were together with friends is the words you used in my direction had more of an edge than the words you used in the directions of other people there. And, you know, I could be wrong, but I'm just, I'm just curious if you've noticed that too. Oh, no, no, I'm not like that. I, I, I think you're great. I really love you, Christine. But, oh, okay, well, if I see it again, do I have your permission just just to give you a little nudge so you know that maybe there's something going on that that I might have stepped on your toes that maybe just happens every now and then, right? Because my relationship with you is really important to me. And, and so you come at it as somebody who's trying to repair a relationship that you're really concerned about, that you really value. And that makes so much better sense to somebody who might be a little bristly, right? Like, oh, they're leaning in. They they want me in their life. Then for you to say, well, why do you treat me bad? <laughs> right? Right. Right. Oh, Just okay. come in knowing that you're so valuable. They're, they're, they want to love you. They just don't know how. That you're there to show them how that looks for you. Okay. So is it appropriate? So I, I, um, I had a client who, um, at the end of her marriage, um, said that her spouse became, uh, ex-spouse became very critical of the way she spoke. So Mm -hmm. would it, would it, uh, would it be in line with what you just said for her to, to have said something to him like, you know, what is it that you think I should have said or said differently with something along those lines? Be the, feel that curiosity that you mentioned? Well, I would encourage the curiosity, but no, I, I'm not a fan of giving somebody else power to tell you how to speak or what to say okay. or write. Okay. Like, like, just like, hey, I'm, I'm noticing that you're not okay with some of the things I say or some of the things I do. Uh, okay. and. I, I, that's just that's just who I am. Okay. If there's something, if there's a message under there you need me to hear, I'm all ears. But I'm I'm not going to change how I talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Like, no. 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 Uh, I I I actually like that a lot better than the example I gave. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of like being being those boundaries. Right. Like I'm here to support what you need, but. This is who I am, and you're gonna, it's gonna have to work within within those lanes. Yes, I'm. I'm also here to be who I am. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for that response. Thank you. Now we just have a couple minutes left in this segment, and um, so I wanted to ask you, how do you teach children to tap into their internal resources? especially if you yourself are reactive. Oh yeah. I can't tell you how many times that my worst my my worst personal stories about my bad behavior are as a parent. Honestly. Because you know, we have a lot writing on how our kids show up in the world and how that reflects on us and a lot of it frankly is sexism. <laughs> but it's there and um so I think the best thing is one of my tricks was to give myself times out, like a time out. I would just say, I can't be the best mom I want to be right now. I'm going to give myself a time out. Mm-hmm. And I would literally like put myself in my bedroom and my kids would try to follow me in there. And like, nope, nope, mommy's having a time out. Sorry, you can't talk to me right now. And I would just go get my head on straight before, because I knew what was coming out of my mouth next would not be okay. Right. Okay. And then the other thing with, with kids is when they're having big feelings, I just encourage people, let them have them. I mean, we we have so much time with emotional repression as adults. 
we shouldn't do it to kids because they're still figuring out like the power of their emotions and how to name their feelings. So just let them have them and then have the conversation. Don't, don't shut down the feelings first. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you for that. Well, it's time to take a short break. So when Christine and I return, we will have more on um, conflict resolution and de-escalation. I'm Glenn Alex. You're watching the Glenn Alex show on the Bold Brave TV network. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm your host, Glenn Alex, and you are watching the Glenn Alex show live on the Bold Brave TV network. Here speaking with Christine Scott, chief trainer at Seattle Conflict Resolution about conflict resolution and how you can de-escalate yourself, which will benefit everybody around you, especially yourself. So Christine, um, I do have a question about workplace because there are a lot of interpersonal conflicts on the job. Um, would you recommend, uh, you know, outside of the person being self-aware and uh, showing compassion to the other person, at what point would you recommend they go to a superior to intervene? Yeah, um, I recommend most workplaces adopt some type of policy around your first line of defense is to go to the person that you have the conflict with and that we all expect that as, as professionals. And then if you're not successful, you pull in somebody else who you're now going to have a three-person conversation around the conflict, right? Somebody else who can be impartial um, and just kind of hold that professional, the professional norms for the organization in the room. Um, and you are using the same techniques around de-escalating yourself first. Um, one thing that's great about workplaces is people usually have pretty clearly defined roles. And I encourage people like get get really specific about what is my role in this, what is their role in this, and how can we resolve this conflict so that we can be the best coworkers as possible and kind of invest in that long-term co-working relationship. Okay, okay, that sounds good. So you would not recommend that the su supervisor speaks to them individually. You, you'd rather a conversation where no. everyone's present. Yeah, triangulation just makes conflict worse. <laughs> Especially when there's a power dynamic, right? And the supervisor pulls in a power dynamic. A lot of the conflicts that I'm hearing about right now feel much more cultural and generational. Like we have, you know, these millennials and these, these Gen Zers who show up much different in the workplace and have, I think, a lot higher standards for how they should be treated um, than folks of my generation. And I think that's fabulous. But it creates it creates some ripples, right? Because when people you're supervising are asking for standards that you didn't have at that age, you might feel a little little poopy about it. Right, right. Okay, okay, very good. I you know, I wish we had more time to talk about this some more because like I said, this is a very important topic and I I really hope people will contact you and learn more about how to de-escalate de themselves and to resolve conflicts appropriately. So I want to thank you again for making time to be here. I really appreciate that and your flexibility. <laughs> so what is the one nugget, the one takeaway you want viewers to have? Um, when I just tell them whenever something is getting under your skin, just use that as your as your barometer for something that you get to work on, something that's about some type of internal message that you have, and give that you know give that negative self talk all of the love it needs to go away. Okay, I love that. I love how how you how you um, identify conflict resolution in terms of self awareness, self management, self regulation and learning about self. I love that. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for the work you're doing. Uh, Cause I, I totally believe that if we are um, better to ourselves and we can, we, we have no choice but to be better to others and that will make the world better all around. So thank you again for being here. How can anyone contact you if they have a question or comment or want a consultation? Yeah, um, so I am at seattleconflictresolution.com and um, 
for workplaces, I have a special going on right now where they can get either a free survey where they get to rate their team conflict readiness or where they get to see how much money they're spending in hiring and replacing folks because, um, let's face it, conflict not resolved in the workplace creates a lot of turnover. So Yes, it does. That's my offer to your listeners just to let them know that I can help them on a Zoom and we can work through some of these issues together. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much it, again, and I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, and thank you for tuning in again to the Glenn Alex Show. I hope you learned a lot about conflict resolution and how important it is to be self-aware, to self-regulate. So you can de-escalate whatever conflict you're in and, um, I don't know, just be healthier and better for it and help the other person learn in that process. You know, globally, we're all aware of, of the divides and that isolate and, and hurt different people. I really want us to take individual responsibility for de-escalating ourselves, which will positively impact the collective because we need conflict resolution for the health of humanity. And to learn more about my work in total health and my book, Living in Total Health, please visit glennalex.com and join us on the Glenn Alex Show here on the Bold Brave TV network next week and learn more about your health. And until next time, be well. Joyful, connected, confident, confident.